Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're at the mouth of the Klickitat River on the Columbia River for coho or silver salmon. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf, and this is Angler West Television. The forecast was for 18 degrees this morning, but thankfully it's actually in the high 20s. We're with guide Chris Turvey along with a Brad's crew looking for a red hot coho salmon bite with Brad's Wigglers. BW18. That's mine. I like it. Mine. So we're down here at the mouth of the Klickitat River and we're going to be fishing Brad Wigglers, the uh, regular size. These dive 8 to 10 feet. So today we're going to try to target um, 12 feet or less of water. We got a shock bumper on there, a 30 pound mono with a 30 pound braid with a short eight and a half foot. Oh wow, that was a quick one. You were right. Got one right there. on. Oh, he spit. Is he still there? Yeah, he spit. He spit it, he spit it. Let him drop it back down. Why don't you why don't you peg that one at 30 feet on the line counter? Let's try that. So we're going out poles today. The back rods, we're going to put out 25 poles, which is around 50 feet. Um, the next set of rods are going to go up. They're going to go out 40 feet and then 35. So unlike uh, the 360 fishing, you don't want to wait for these rods to load up. Your rod goes down. You want to get to it quick. Don't set the hook. Just apply pressure. Okay. Um, it's kind of a struggle for me. I've been 360 uh, bait, super bait fishing so much. Uh, plug rod would go off and we'd sit there and wait. Yeah, he's on there. And then we'd yeah. go to grab the rod and he's gone. Um, so go these ones here you want to get to and and, uh, and uh, apply pressure to them. Like I said, you don't want to set the hook. You just want to kind of keep pinching on them and just reel. Some of these fish will run right to the boat. Some of them will stay out there a ways. This is a nice, frisky little guy. He, he's stuck. I think he's going to come right on in. Coming right on in. Come to yeah, mama. Yeah. Come to mama. Yeah. Nice. Yeehaw. All right, That's here it comes. I see the I see the real real soft of the bead and then when we get to the bead you just slowly lift up. All right. Nice work, Bernita. All righty, he's coming. He's coming. He's right down under the boat now. It's a it's a lot of fun on these light oh, rods. Oh boy, yeah. No lead. Feels All like right. you have a big old sturgeon on here. Better than that though. Woohoo! Woo! He's taking line. Taking a little line. And your little line's line. frozen, so that's gonna add a little bit. And your fingers are probably frozen. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Woo! Hey, be, good job, yeah. If he goes okay, under the boat, bear your rod. Knee. There you go. Here yeah, comes slowly, the knee. Oh. Okay, slowly right. lift up. Don't. Yep. Slow. Lift, 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 lift. He's taking off. Real good. Stay right on the side of the boat, though. Okay. Stay, stay right. Good job, good net nice. job. Woohoo! Yeah. That was awesome. Look it at that beautiful bread. little that wiggler in his mouth. Yeah, we gotta let that one go. Oh, is it a wild? Yeah. Is it a king? Yep. I thought he stayed oh, down off of my phone. Nice Chinook. Yep, yep it's a, a wild one. Yep, wild Chinook. Yep. Oh, off it goes. Still bright, too, out of the water. Just gorgeous. So, that's pretty great. We're flatlining Brad Wigglers, um, the regular size. Wiggler. Um, that one there just got bit on the Fire Tiger. It's a BW74. That's probably one of the better colors. Uh, the other one's the red herringbone or the orange or solid red. Um, the trick today in the morning, these fish are going to be suspended. We're fishing right now 27 feet of water. Well, these fish are going to be high up in the water column, 10, 9 feet. That's where flat line in these plugs, uh, 50, 60 feet back, are really effective. And as the sun gets up, we're gonna go over into some shallow water, um, eight to 10 feet of water where those, those fish can't get deeper than us and, and hopefully hit some there. But uh, what's going on here is that we're at the mouth of Ticketat River in the Columbia. These fish are kind of collecting here. There's three to 600 a day coming over Bonneville and each day they're coming here and, and the Clickitat's still low, so they'll kind of stage here. Um, some of these fish have been here for a long time, a month. Some of them have been here for a week or two before they shoot up into the Klickitat and go up uh, to the hatchery up there and, uh, and spawn. Oh, oh boy. It was so cold that the, the reel was freezing over while the fish was running even. Ice was flying off the reel. 
Temperature is about 28 degrees. Nice and warm, but sunny and 75 up here, so it's all good. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yep, go ahead and bring them all like in. It. That orange one, I was telling you, Brad. <laughs> what what number is the orange again? I forget. BW18. 18. 18. Yeah. Hoping for a keeper on this one. Welcome back to the Columbia River. I'm Justin Wolf. We're having to battle frozen reels and fingers, but so far the fish are cooperating. We've released a Chinook and right away have hooked up with what is hopefully a hatchery coho or silver salmon. Hoping for a keeper on this one. That's frozen, that's a good sign, right? A little, little uh, fall coho fishing. Oh, nice. There we go. Beautiful fish. Okay. Not bad for oh almost gosh. Halloween. That's a big one. Regular size uh, BW18. I've never got one that big. I will today. So we just got our first one on the boat today. It's a nice uh, chrome coho on a BW18. It's the orange. Beautiful Regular size orange. Wiggle or uh, wiggler. Tomorrow's. Uh, what is it? Halloween. Look how chrome that it's fish coming is. Coming right up. That's right. <laughs> so this is a little, just a tad bit bigger um, than your average size. Uh, nice fat hand. That's a beautiful fish. Get some eggs from that, and I did the yeah, fish. probably ten minutes in the water, and uh, Chris put us right on them. Beauty. Beautiful thing up here. We can keep hatchery or wild. So. You can. Nice job, Chris. That a awesome. boy. Thank you. There you go, there you go. Here, bring it, bring it. Fish on, Jared. I'll take it over this side, or which side do you want him? Here comes the bead. I think we're going to take one. I think it's another king. Battery's red. Yeah, he's, just, he's a color, but he's just a little red. Bring it on. There we go. Alright! Gosh dang, that's a pretty fish. Yeah! Another one on, now this one's on a different yep, lure. Yep, this one on a different one. Oh, oh. Give me some wine. That's a pretty fish. Yeah! Do you modify your plugs or just use them out of the box? No, these, these here, these Brad Wigglers, um, they got some BMC hooks that are work just fine. Whoa, whoa! There you go, there's a the fish on. Nice. I'll tell you, those yeah, hooks we don't, work uh, well. I think so. Did somebody, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> it's coming on in. You didn't even get the other line out before this fire tiger, this guy, this right? This is a, yep, fire tiger. Got little. BW74. And here comes. Got him. Okay, let's him line out. Nice job, Benita. Another Scott, you can do that one, and then I gotta. I'm gonna. We're gonna float. Uh, we'll take care of both these fish, get our pictures real quick, and then go catch a bunch more. Isn't that a pretty fish? That's a beauty. And that's hatchery because it does clip yep. fin right there. This will be delicious. It's worth the drive from Coeur d'Alene. It is. In the blizzard. On a Halloween night, <laughs> or almost Halloween. So on some of these, we've been putting a little bit of this um, bait wax. This this one here is herring. You just kind of take it and just kind of rub it on there. What's nice about this is you're not having to use your hands, and that's all it takes. It's just one couple strokes like that, and you're good to go. It's a Pro Cure bait wax, like a little mini deodorant stick, a little roller. It smells pretty good. It works good. Ah, oh, dude, it's it's. If it was just about 10, 15 degrees warmer, it'd be a lot more enjoyable. Everything's icing up. The reels, the reels are icing up on us. Oh, there you go, there you go, Brad, there you go, Brad. Woo, 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 woo. Do you want this one up? Yeah. Might have to walk back here, Brad. There you go, buddy. There you go, Brad. 
believe uh, that was a fire tiger too, Brad. There is. BW 74. BW 74. Yeah. There you go, fish. All right. All right. Yeah. That's a nice little chrome one. Oh, beauty. Yeah. Beauty. They're fresh. Some of these are just super fresh. It's like they're. Uh, at the end of the day, there's scales coming off them when we're playing them. Um, they're just booking it. It's a good early morning Brad's Wiggler bite on the Columbia River. There's fish in the area, but it's not a given that they will actually bite your lure. Scent and a variety of other factors can help trigger the biting instinct. Like with any fishery, presentation is key. So the other thing with with the sandy bottom, but sometimes these plugs will be digging in the sand. It's almost like it's putting out a sand vapor trail that these fish like. It's, it. Uh, we pick up a lot of fish when they're dragging in the sand sometimes. Thanks, Dad. It's turning. Oh, oh. Where do you want me? Well, I, left or right? <laughs> my net's frozen, so I. <laughs> oh no! Dip in the water. Dip in the water. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's a hot fish. Good fish. Saw the boat. There he is. Come on in. Hey! It's the rail's frozen solid. <laughs> I have to pull it out. It's frozen. Nice one. Nice one. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. These are some pretty That was uh That one was caught on this bait wax again too. Yeah. What flavor that, is that? This one's herring. Oh, I don't think it's ever I've done a lot of shrimp and The shrimp's salmon, really, the shrimp salmon. the sweet shrimp is really good. What's nice about it is you're not getting any scent on your hands. It's just ready to go. Not on the line either. It's a perfect example of those plugs digging in the sand. Right before Brittany's fish, her rod was kind of dredging bottom, and then all of a sudden, wow, fish came and grabbed it. So, another setup that we like to do is using the Brad's mud bugs or their Magnum or regular standard size bait divers. We'll take a bait diver, and then off the back, we'll have a uh, shrimp spinner, a couple beads, and then we'll just put our shrimp on there. This particular one we're going to hook in the uh, side, kind of like that. As you can see, it kind of looks resembles a plug cut herring or plug cut super bait. So when that's in the water, it's going to spin. Sometimes this can be deadly. This morning they're on a plug bite, but um, it's always handy to have one of these out there in case they go to a shrimp bite. So that's the uh, the Brad's mud bug. Kind of see how it's see how it, oh, shrimp's just slowly spinning. I thought it was that one up front. Bring them all in. Thank you, Wade. Yeah. Thank you, Wade. Good job, Wade. Good job. Ah, little Jack. <laughs> I was like, is it on there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to bathe that spinner. and. <laughs> so that was a magnum mud bug and a prawn. A shrimp, uh, shrimp spinner. Wait. Got her, buddy. How are we doing, buddy? Good. Yay. Mud, mud bug and uh, prosper. There's nice chrome bright fish. So we just got that fish on a uh, 3.5 prawn spinner or shrimp spinner um, with a mud bug as a diver. Um, I think what a lot of guys don't don't take advantage of that method, especially when you're fishing uh, targeting a certain depth of plugs. There's a huge advantage to a, a floating diver um, versus lead because it's, it's gonna drag in the mud, it's not gonna get hung up. Um, if you let off, it'll float up. Um, there's a lot of advantages of that. So 
the way we're putting these on here for these coho this particular one we're just kind of going in the side and we're going off uh, about like that if you look it's kind of kicked over at a 45 and I like to have that hook just dangling back there nothing special um, when that's in the water it's sitting there spinning but uh, I can't emphasize enough how 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 uh, valuable and effective running a diver to that shrimp spinner um, trolling is um, it's not just a back trolling in a current uh, river situation that thing can be fished out in uh, any depth you want so but uh, good fish Wade that was uh, we just caught one on that we're gonna go try and catch another one real quick oh Wade's got it oh he's right there he's right there There you go, that one had the uh, Pro Cure Salmon Slammer on it. Right here. I thought I smelled that. It's got, it's got the perfect amount of garlic. Awesome. Hey everybody, I hope you're enjoying today's episode where we're fishing for coho or silver salmon at the mouth of the Klickitat River on the Columbia River. Now first thing in the morning, they're jumping all over the Brad's Wigglers. But now we're starting to get a couple bites on prawn spinners. We're pulling those prawn spinners behind a Brad's mud dog diver. Now diver and bait, that whole concept, that might be something that's maybe a lost art. But I tell you what, it is extremely effective and sometimes a better way to go than back bouncing lead or, or trolling lead. Very effective. Give these a shot if you've never tried that before. I think you might be surprised at just how well these things fish. Now prawns or shrimp, a prawn is a name for a bigger shrimp basically, but in the northwest call them coon shrimp for some reason. So to get your coon shrimp you need to either buy fresh bait and cure it yourself which Procure has three different varieties of shrimp and prawn cure which is an excellent way to go or if you want to just buy bait already made up I carry the Washington Coon Shrimp here in the shop. I think it's, I think it's the best quality. Uh, the baits are the right size, the right color, and they must taste great because the fish really eat them. And what's really the key is, is consistency. You know, it's one thing to make a good batch of bait. It's another thing to do that 10,000 times over. So very consistent, high quality bait here. And we will ship this. We'll put an ice pack with it and ship it off to you. Now, it's important to keep this cold. You know, don't let your bait or eggs or any kind of bait get warm because lots of things can happen. Of course, it can spoil, but the more you know, technical level, the, the, the pH will get out of balance and that will turn the bite off. So keep your eggs in a cooler or your coon shrimp in a cooler and you're gonna catch more fish. Now let's go back to the Columbia River, see if we can't catch a couple more coho. So one thing with these brad divers, uh, the bait divers, the mud bugs and then the, the magnum and the standard divers, a lot of guys think that these are just good for current back trolling um, in a river setting. They work really good as well in a trolling situation. What's nice about these versus a dropper weight is you can stop or whatnot and this is going to float up and your bait's not going to get hung up in the rocks or the weeds. Um, and especially, it also, if there's a a uh, certain depth of water that you're trying to target, these are awesome for that. Um, today we're, we're targeting fish that are in the 10 to 12 foot range, and these divers are gonna be putting them right in the fish's face. Again, we're gonna be putting these out uh, 50 to 60 feet back, and uh, pulling them just like you would a plug. But what's really handy about it is you can mix and match these amongst your wiggler spread, and it won't, uh, won't tangle up, um, it's fishing the same depth, but it's nice because it gives the fish a little something different. Um, if they don't want to plug, they can have a little bit of bait. Something real in this rod here. Let's just hold that for a second. Reel up, guys. All right, mud bug strikes again. Brad's mud bug, I like it. I want me, that's curvy. On him. All right, he's all wrapped up. It's he coho. Up. It's a wrapped coho. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unwrapped. All right. There we go. Another bud, 
mud bug and you got Brad's mud bug. The shrimp spinner is perfect. It's a good tag team there. It's a good duo. Beautiful fall fish. Day before Halloween. Gotta love it. And even though, you know, with a lot of the new techniques of the, the 360 flashers and different different lures you put behind them, and the the Brad Wiggler still works. Um, a couple hot tips I would say is don't be afraid to try different colors. Um, greens, reds, chromes, um, metallic blues. So a lot of people ask about how to rig the Brad's Wigglers and there's just about as many different ways to rig them as there are Wigglers themselves. So casting from a bank, a lot of people will go just a single side wash on the back, a 2-0 attached to a barrel swivel right there. And that gets good action. You can cast it nice and far. And when the coho bite that, it really gets a good, good hook set right in the corner of the mouth. It digs deep with that side wash. Of course, you can fish them right out of the package like this, which is the BW111, which uh, I'll say is one of the hotter ones for sure. And then this is the way I like to fish them for trolling. So just use a Brad's four bead chain with a couple split rings and then just the number four hook. But the thing about coho that people know is that when a coho bites it, they'll jump, they'll get wrapped around, they'll try and leverage those hooks against each other and against the plug and pop off. So the beauty of this is no matter how much it twists and turns, that coho is still gonna stay connected because the hook will just continue to spin with it. So many different ways to rig them, but those are just a few that you might wanna try. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing. <laughs>